Hello, I welcome you all in this presentation related with the subject failure analysis and prevention. And we are talking about the soft tools or industrial engineering tools uh, uh, which uh, will be useful from the failure analysis point of view. And uh, uh, we are talking about the reliability related aspects uh, regarding the failures. So, uh, we know that uh, whenever a component is put in use, uh, we will find that uh, uh, gradually its performance will keep on decreasing as a function of time and uh, eventually uh, uh, it fails. But when the same type of components uh, are put in use in very large number and then if they are uh, the failure tendency as a function of time is uh, noticed, then what we can see here if uh, in the x axis we have the time and in y axis we have the number of units uh, which uh, are uh, there. Uh, you can say initially if we see uh, 0 time there are 500 number of units of a particular product which are working like say 100, 200, 300 and 400. So, as a function of time like say 1 month, 2 months, 3 4, 5th, 6th uh, time in say we can write here months. So, if we try to see uh, initially the in which way the failure, failure data for this uh, number of units as a function of time if is recorded, then what we find that the failure rate uh, actually uh, in terms of the number of uh, units, the failure rate initially uh, decreases. So, what this trend shows in like initially uh, the, the, the rate of the failure um, will be high and it will keep on decreasing as a function of time and then uh, the rate of the failure will become constant and then again rate of the failure will become will be increasing. So, here if you see in the in the y axis we have the number of units in x axis we have a time and if we see the, the slope of the curve will indicate the rate of failure and the rate of failure slope is actually negative it is it, it is decreasing slope is decreasing and here the slope is constant. So, the rate of failure is also constant and if the slope is positive. So, we can say the failure rate is increasing. So, since in this case we have the number of units and the time. So, the slope of the curve will, increase, will indicate the uh, rate of failure. So, here uh, in the initial stage we have the decreasing failure rate, constant failure rate and increasing failure rate. If this curve is plotted differently, where in, in the y axis if we have uh, like failure rate and in uh, x axis if there is a time. Then since the failure rate here slope is getting negative as a function of time, so the this, uh, failure rate uh, will be decreasing. See in the y axis we have failure rate and then failure rate becomes constant and then failure rate it starts increasing. So, uh, this type of the curve if you see initially the failure rate is high then it will keep on decreasing then it will become constant and then it will be increasing. So, if we see either both these curves if we see there are the three distinct zones the zone 1, zone 2 and zone 3. Here the slope is negative so the rate is decreasing slope is constant and the slope is positive means the failure rate is increasing. So, here the same thing when it is plotted in terms of the failure rate again we find three different zones like the zone 1, zone 2 and zone 3. So, this is called uh, uh, this first zone is called debugging phase uh, uh, this is the chance failure case and this is the wear out phase. 
So, if you have to understand whenever a complex system is put in use, initially it will pose the number of the complications and that is why uh, and as soon as we start taking corrective actions, the rate of failure will keep on decreasing. Thereafter, it will give us the useful life period that is uh, wherein the failures will be occurring by chance and that rate becomes almost constant and in the third phase is the wear out phase where after completing the useful life of the product, it uh, the failure rate starts increasing due to the wear and tear which will be experienced by the product. So, this uh, the kind of failure rate as a function of time, uh, the failure rate uh, for the different types of the products as a function time, as a function of time uh, varies. So, uh, the, there are three kind of the variations which uh, are generally observed with regard to the failure rate as a function of time and uh, these are uh, indicated with the help of say uh, this uh, diagram wherein the failure distribution uh, which are normally applicable to the reliability uh, calculations. One is the exponential distribution, second is the normal distribution and the third one is the Weibull distribution. So, these three types of the distributions have been uh, shown here. In one case, the failure rate is decreasing as a function of time. In another case, failure rate is increasing and in third, uh, failure rate is constant and the third case where the failure rate is uh, increasing. So, this uh, either decreasing when the failure rate is decreasing as a function of time, um, the, the beta value is found to be less than 1 and when the failure rate is constant, the beta value is uh, 1 and when the failure rate is increasing as a function of time, the beta value is greater than 1. So, uh, in, order to, uh, in order to explain uh, these failure rates as a function of time, because initially the failure rate is decreasing, then it becomes constant and then it is increasing. These three phases uh, related with the life curve of a uh, product or of a system is uh, represented with the help of this diagram which is, uh, uh, which is uh, also uh, uh, termed as bathtub curve and uh, which is uh, uh, this type of name is given because of its uh, shape. Here this shape is similar to the bathtub where in the initial zone is uh, where the failure rate is uh, decreasing. So, here our beta value is less than 1, here beta value is equal to 1 and here beta value is greater than 1 for the three different uh, stages of the life of the product. So, this is what uh, is uh, represented with the help of this bath tub curve. In this case, what we have like if the failure rate in y axis and uh, uh, the time of the service in the x axis. Uh, so, here uh, we can see the failure rate is decreasing in the initial stage. This is termed as early failure or debugging phase where the minor issues are taken care of as a function of time. So, that system is starts functioning as expected and then uh, in the second stage, the failures occur by chance and uh, the failure rate is almost constant and it is minimum failure rate in this uh, phase and after completing this useful life uh, portion, the wear out phase uh, starts in where uh, due to the loss of dimensions, loss of uh, properties, degradation in the uh, size and shape. Uh, the, the product uh, starts malfunctioning and uh, that uh, internally to the uh, failure of the component. So, this is what is uh, known as the uh, life history curve or bath tub curve uh, for uh, uh, any kind of product. Uh, so, here uh, in detail we can see what is the significance of the debugging phase. It is uh, characterized by the marginal and the short life parts that uh, cause a rapid decrease in failure rate and it may be the part of the testing activity prior to the shipment of the product and the V will distribution in this case is observed wherein beta value is less than 1 is used to describe the occurrence of the failure 
in the debugging phase or the initial failure case. And uh, in the second case where the chance failure phase exists in, the failures occur in random manner due to the constant uh, failure rate and the exponential and we will distribution for this situation um, is expressed through the beta equal to 1 um, is the best suited to describe this phase. And the wear out phase is depicted or is shown by the sharp increase in the failure rate after the end of the at the end of the useful life portion at the second stage after the second stage and normal distribution and we will distribution uh, for uh, this kind of the phase is expressed using the beta greater than 1 to describe this phase. Uh, in, in the case when the, uh, the failure uh, distribution is normal, the reliability is expressed using these equations and where in uh, the RT is the reliability at a particular time and P is the probability of the failure uh, at that particular time. So, RT is obtained from the 1 minus P. Uh, t. So, the p t here is p within the bracket t is the, the probability of the failure at that particular moment of the time. And for the exponential failure, uh, if the, the uh, distribution of the failure is exponential, in that case the reliability is calculated using this simple equation like the reliability at the moment of the time is obtained uh, through the equation e raised to the power uh, minus t by theta. So, t is the time for at which the reliability is being uh, checked and the theta is the mean value, mean life or the mean target value for which the reliability is being assessed. Uh, so, this is how we can calculate uh, the reliability for the time when, uh, for the condition when the distribution of the failure is exponential. Uh, so, theta you can say the target value or the mean value and uh, the t is the time uh, at which uh, time or the cycle or the value for which uh, the reliability is being calculated. So, uh, here now we will see one typical example related with the case where the distribution of failure is exponential. So, here what we can see here if the response time x uh, at a certain online computer terminal has an exponential distribution means the response time uh, for a, a particular computer terminal has the exponential distribution and if that time is x with the expected or target value of the time of response is say 5 second. So, uh, the average or the target value here is 5 second and the response time uh, shows the exponential distribution which is say x. So, what we need to calculate is what will be the probability that response time is at the most 10 seconds. So, the probability to have the response in 10 seconds is calculated. This is the one case what will the how to calculate the probability for the response time of the 10 seconds. And uh, uh, the second case is what is the probability that response time will fall between the 5 and 10 seconds. Here the target value or the theta value is 5. So, for this case if you have to calculate the uh, reliability then for calculating the reliability first of all we have to calculate the probability of the failure. So, probability that a response time is at the most 10 second is obtained through the uh, we know that reliability is equal to 1 minus probability of the failure and the probability of failure here is 1 minus uh, e uh, uh, that t by theta t here is the, the, the value for which uh, we are trying to see the probability to achieve that or uh, t is the value that is in the uh, that what is the probability to uh, have or complete that activity in 10 seconds with respect to the target or average value of uh, uh, like say the 5 seconds. So, here uh, 1 minus e uh, raised to the power 10 by uh, 5. So, 10 is the time in seconds uh, for which the probability is being assessed and the average time value is 5. So, this is how we can calculate and the 
uh, what we can see here reliability is coming out 1 minus 0.135. So, this is the reliability of the failure and 0.865 this will give us the reliability to achieve the response time at the most in 10 seconds. And similarly, the probability to have the response time between the 5 and 10 seconds can be obtained in the same way like the, uh, the probability to get uh, uh, this response time in 5 seconds or in 10 seconds. So, what uh, we will have here? Uh, the probability for having uh, the response in 10 seconds minus the probability to have the response time in 5 seconds. So, this is what we can see the probability to have the response time in 10 seconds that is being obtained through 1 minus e raised to the power minus 2 uh, and minus uh, 1 minus uh, e raised to the power uh, minus 1. So, here minus 2 and minus 1 are coming from like say minus 2 is by 10 by 5. So, that will be giving us the minus 2 and here the 5 by 5 that because here this is the range. So, minimum value is being placed here. So, the average value is 5 and the, the time for which we are looking at is also 5. So, this will give us the value of uh, minus 1 and on calculations we get this uh, the probability that a response time is between 5 and 10 second will be uh, the 0.233. Uh, now, uh, now, instead of having the normal distribution and exponential distribution, if the failure distribution is uh, of the v bull type. So, in that case, uh, uh, the v bull distribution uh, for the, uh, we know that for the debugging phase, the v bull distribution, um, the, uh, in debugging phase, for the v bull distribution, the beta value is uh, less than 1 and for the chance failure uh, this value is equal to 1 and uh, the when the beta value is equal to 1 the we will distribution equals to the exponential distribution and uh, when the beta value is equal to 3.4 then we will distribution approximates or equals to the normal distribution. So, to for uh, having the, uh, the reliability at a particular time uh, we need to calculate uh, the reliability for the we will distribution. Uh, the failure rate uh, here RT is obtained through the E raised to the power minus T by theta. T by theta this component is same as that for the exponential distribution. Additionally, it has one more coefficient and this is the beta. So, depending upon the, the phase of the life of a product whether it is debugging phase or the um, the second phase that, that is the chance failure case or the uh, we are out phase we have to put the suitable value of the beta. So, uh, the beta basically is obtained from the, uh, the slope of the curve where the failure rate is available as a function of time. So, here uh, say uh, this is another example for the uh, when the failure distribution uh, follows the v bull uh, distribution. So, here like say the in this example, if uh, the ultimate strength of the steel uh, is x at a, a 200 degree centigrade, and if e x has uh, if x follows the Weibull distribution with the uh, parameter beta is equal to 20, uh, then uh, for this situation the average value is the 100 MPa that is the strength. Then we, we need to find what is the probability to get the value. Uh, less than 105 and what will be the probability to get the value between the uh, 98 to 102 and uh, what will be the value if uh, uh, for, uh, value of x for the probability of the point uh, 1. So, we will take up the first two issues where in uh, uh, we can see uh, the probability to have the value less than 105. So, what we have see? our the value for which the probability is being considered is 105, beta is the, uh, the Weibull distribution coefficient that is 20 and uh, 100 is the average value. So, we have uh, we have all the, these three values. So, the probability for this situation is being obtained uh, from the equation 1 minus e raised to the power minus. So, here this is the T is the value for which probability is being calculated that is 105 and 100 is the 
average or the target value average value or the mean value and the beta is the uh, the coefficient that is the beta is the 20 20 is the beta value uh, which is given for this case and when we calculate uh, this uh, uh, when we solve this uh, equation what we get the 0.93 is the probability to get the value less than 105. Similarly, uh, the probability to get the value of uh, strength ranging from the 98 to 102 that is also uh, can be calculated uh, from uh, this equation wherein like say the probability for a failure to get in this range uh, 102 and 98 is obtained. So, here what we can see 102 is the uh, higher range and uh, the beta is the uh, we will distribution coefficient and uh, 100 is the average value or the target value, uh, average value which is given while on the 98 is the lower value and uh, the beta is the that same coefficient and uh, the 100 is the coefficient value uh, 100 is the average value so this is how we can uh, we can calculate the probability for uh, the higher value uh, minus uh, lower values uh, that will give us uh, the probability to have the value of the strength between the 98 to the 102 and uh, this will be giving us like 0.28 with the probability to achieve the value of a strength uh, in range of the 98 to 100 that will be like 0.287. So, this is how I will summarize this uh, presentation. In this presentation, I have talked about the failure uh, rate as a function of time and there are, there, there are three different uh, uh, kind of the distribution of the failure rate. One is the nominal normal distribution, exponential distribution and uh, Weeble distribution. So, use of this failure distribution is that if we have the failure data for a particular phase of the product. Uh, then we can estimate whether what will is the what will be the probability to get a particular uh, product to survive or what will be the particular uh, uh, unit to deliver the job uh, as per the required function and uh, uh, at the same time uh, we will distribution is very useful in the sense that uh, if we have the data very few data also like in this phase few data points then it, this can be used to see what is the um, uh, probability of the failure after a particular period of the time. So, even very few data points help to have the value of the beta uh, with the regard to the uh, given average value uh, we can calculate the probability uh, for uh, uh, for the survival or the reliability of uh, a particular product um, to work or uh, the possibility of the failure a probability of the failure can be uh, obtained through this kind of the failure distributions which can be like the exponential distribution or it can be the Weevil uh, distribution. So, uh, from the failure analysis point of view from the history of the failures of a particular type of product if we have the the failure rate and the slope of the curve for the failure rate then we can uh, uh, slope of the failure rate then we can calculate the probability of the failure of a particular uh, product or the system uh, after a particular period of time so, this will help us in uh, making the suitable plans so that preventive measures can be taken from the maintenance point of view. Thank you for your attention.